What's going on everyone? My name's Tenebris Infinite and today I'm going to be showing you dudes how to farm the Reaper in Generation Zero here in 2022. So I go about farming the Reaper in a little bit different of a method than some of the typical approaches to farming a Reaper and I've got some tips and some methods that I've devised on my own for streamlining farming the Reaper. So today I'm going to give out all of my dirty little secrets about how I go about farming the Reaper to obtain things like experimental weapons, uh, high-end resources, as well as just fat drops of loot such as uh, met kits and you know all of that sort of jazz anything that you want from the Reaper you'll be able to get super easily with this video here today my other goal today is to make these steps as simple to follow as possible so these are going to be very easy steps to getting the Reaper here and potentially one of the most simple guides to follow on the internet when it comes to farming this guy so the number one first step when it comes to farming the Reaper is maxing out your active amount of rivals in a given region. We're going to be using the farmlands region for an example here as it's one of my favorite and one of the easiest regions to fight the Reaper in. But you can use these tips in any of the regions across the map, even including the archipelago. So the goal that you have when you're first approaching farming the Reaper is getting your active rivals up to eight. Eight is the current maximum limit that you can have for rivals in a given region. And once you have those eight maximum rivals, you could start really farming up your region score to get your region level up high enough in order to get the Reaper to spawn. Now getting your region up to level 25 is not a necessary factor of spawning in the Reaper, but you do need your level to be above 21. And with each level above that, you have a higher chance of spawning the Reaper when you make an active rival. This is part of the reason why we want to have eight active rivals at a given time, so that that way we can have one rival that we can pick off and have that kind of open rival slot become the Reaper and then take down the Reaper and have that open rival slot just kind of sit there for the Reaper once we've got the region Reaper ready. Now next up let's talk about how you can increase your score easily and quickly. So uh, this is a method of farming region score and farming experience and a whole bunch of stuff that I devised ages ago when the behavior was introduced into the game for harvesters to call in hunters. I immediately saw it as an opportunity for farming in the game and even though it's been nerfed along the way it's not an infinite source of experience it's still one of the best methods of earning experience and earning region score quickly and efficiently here in the game. So we're going to take this Harvester rival over here and we're going to start tracking him. And uh, now that we've got him tracked, we've got his location pinpoint, we can head on over, and the goal is to disable the Harvester and then start farming the Hunters that he calls down. Now, one of the important things about this is the class of Harvester. So the Harvester we're going after specifically here is a Phoenix Harvester, which is the second best option in the game. The best option is an Apocalypse Harvester because then you get Apocalypse Hunters and the higher the class level of the machine, the higher the region score you generate from destroying the machine. So with Phoenix, it's kind of like your second best option. Now, while I go about farming these hunters from this harvester, I'm going to kind of just explain a whole bunch of stuff as I kind of do my thing here. So, the first goal that you have is destroying the rocket pods from the harvester. After that, your next goal is to remove the tech pod. Uh, getting rid of both of those things kind of just sets up the harvester to be less annoying while you're farming the hunters from him. He'll still try to get up close to you to do melees and to put out like poison farty gas and stuff like that. But for the most part, as long as you mind your distance, the harvester will be a non-issue provided you take out the tech pod and the rocket pods first. If there are other enemies in the area that are not rivals, 
take them out and destroy them right away. If there are rivals in the area, only destroy them if they are a uh, hunter or below. And if they're a tank, maybe just try avoiding the location instead until the harvester and the tank aren't so paired up. Uh, because a rival tank will definitely be something that gets in the way and killing that tank will reduce your region score overall reducing your region level which will make it harder to hunt and farm the uh, reaper you don't have to use the experimental pvg to do this farming but i just find it to be incredibly efficient due to it having such a high damage output and that piercing potential one thing that you're going to have to deal with a lot of are ticks. All of these hunters are going to be spamming ticks this entire time, and you just kind of have to dodge and weave them, try to get them to run into each other and hit each other in midair, because uh, then they'll take each other out. Uh, and as well, this is another benefit to the experimental PvG, is trying to go for the uh, fuel cell on the back of the hunter. That way you can kind of just blow up all the ticks in the area and uh, vicinity around that hunter. The really excellent thing about this harvester hunter farming method is that you can use this to get your entire region kickstarted from literally score zero all the way up to max level and it's one of the fastest methods of doing so. If your region score is currently zero, just find a harvester, do the exact same thing where you neuter its weapons, farm the hunters off of it, leave the location, do a fast travel, and head back to the location and try to hunt for that harvester again if he didn't become a rival after you finished uh, doing the kind of farming portion. So it's kind of random, but a good rule of thumb is that uh, prototypes will only call in one wave of hunters, military will only call in two, uh, phoenix will call in three, and apocalypse will call in four waves of hunters. But in my experience, uh, it's a little bit more random than that, and it's kind of based more on the harvester's AI and whether or not he's going to spawn in a whole bunch of hunters for you, or just a few waves. Uh, the way it goes is you just kind of go with the flow if he keeps giving you hunters and you have the ammunition and med kits to take them down then just keep killing and keep farming up that experience in that region score now you can see here that we finished off that third wave with that last hunter there and this harvester is not going to call in any more hunters until we fast travel away Doing a fast travel kind of resets the harvester's ability to call in hunters, which is pretty handy for repeat farming a harvester that's nearby a safe house. Alright, and after that, just a quick fast travel to a nearby safe house, and the harvester will have their uh, kind of hunter spawning ability reset. Then you just have to head back to the harvester and rinse and repeat the hunter farming process and you'll farm massive amounts of region score. If you're wondering why my region score hasn't changed in between the past few clips, that's because 21,981 is the maximum score that you can have in a region uh, to kind of like get the most score you could possibly get. So again, you want to do that hunter farming process on whatever the maximum level harvester is in your region. So in the archipelago, the maximum level harvester is going to be a prototype, whereas here in the farmlands, the maximum level would actually be an apocalypse harvester that is a very rare spawn. So uh, yeah, you just have to seek out the highest level harvester to get the highest level hunters to get the highest amount of score. It's at this point that if you're like me and you play on skirmish or say if you play on adventure, you actually want to bump the game up to guerrilla mode. This is the only scenario in which case guerrilla mode actually provides a benefit to you as a player. It makes it much easier to spawn in rivals, ergo spawn in the reaper. Your difficulty level doesn't affect things like loot quality or how much loot you're going to get. 
All it affects, and this is developer confirmed, is the damage you do to machines, the damage the machines do to you, their accuracy when it comes towards like targeting you and stuff, and then the ability to spawn in rivals. And this is where we can use the difficulty to our benefit. Having a higher difficulty means we don't have to expend as much effort into actually getting the Reaper to spawn. So, big sad, of course, I managed to get a rival instead of the Reaper. And this is kind of a burner in this situation. What you need to do now is you need to wait the one hour cooldown timer for uh, the ability to spawn in a new rival or Reaper. Uh, and this is where things come down to RNG and random chance, which is why you want to maximize your score. Again, having a higher level region and the max level being 25, so having a level 25 region will have the highest odds of spawning in the Reaper. Then you combine that with the Gorilla difficulty for the highest odds of having a Reaper or a Rival spawn in, and you get the best kind of scenario. Of course, though, my dumb luck and RNGs is cursing me here for this video. <laughs> I'm gonna have to wait an hour now, but uh, after that, hopefully, the next uh, spawn we get will wind up being the Reaper. Once you have the Reaper spawned in, you have a couple of options. You could go off and fight him outright and just take him down right off the bat. But the option that I kind of prefer to go with is uh, waiting an hour and waiting that uh, kind of Reaper rival spawn. Oh, hey, prototype tank. What up, dude? Uh, the kind of Reaper cooldown timer of one hour so that that way, once I kill the Reaper, uh, I have a chance of having a second Reaper spawn right after I take him down. Alright, so we've waited out the uh, one hour cooldown and hopefully we'll get another Reaper. Again, it's not surefire that we'll get a second Reaper two in a row. We have to get our RNG to line up pretty accurately for that, but hopefully we'll be able to get one. If not, a secondary rival wouldn't be too bad. Um, if you dudes want any tips on how to kill time in Generation Zero, let me know in the comments down below, uh, cause I've got plenty of tips. And, of course, he aggros the moment you're within, like, a hundred meters of him. I forgot to craft! Whoa! Whoa! I'm sorry, guy. I will be back in one moment. <laughs> ah, dude. Pro tip for when you're killing time in Generation Zero. Uh, craft things. <laughs> that way you don't go into a fight unprepared. Alright, we're gonna run back here. Oh, dude! Okay. We're gonna run back here. Oh, man, he clipped us as we went over the freaking hill. Dang it, dude. Um, we're going to craft ourselves some uh, good old experimental med kits and some experimental shock ammo here. Uh, let's see, 762 shock. Beautiful. Let's craft two of those, just to be safe. And then just one batch. I find that you get so many experimental med kits uh, for like one craft that it'll usually last you. All right, let's go big boy. Alright, we need to find ourselves a handy dandy tree. Is he gonna rush us? Come on, man. Tree! Oh, buddy. Alright. Go for his uh, shield generators here, just a little bit. Nice! Look at this tree, taking it all. 
All right, let's equip the proper med kit. Go for the experimental PVG to get some of these knee shots. Oh! Man, it always sucks when the Reaper just, like, puts down his shield and then pops it right back up. Can we use this little barricade? I think we can use this little barricade here. Not for his rockets, of course, but... Which, of course, the first thing he fires. Oh no, it didn't work! Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. All right. I see how it is, Reaper friend. Oh, dude. It's crazy how the Reaper still catches you out. He does so much damage with that machine gun. I think this lineup of these two trees is kind of perfect, though. Let's go. Take down his knee. I think we got it. Maybe. Ultimate pro tip for fighting the Reaper. Get yourself into a good... Jeez. Get yourself into a good defensible position. A situation where you aren't soaking up obscene amounts of damage. Because that machine gun is just it's dirt nasty, dude. So a little bit of forestry, or a house, or even a big rock, anything like that, will serve you fairly well. Especially when he starts going into the thermobaric mode. That's when we're going to have to make the most usage out of these trees and these obstacles. Oop. Oh, Freaking Phoenix ticks. I think they jumped into the tree, though. Oh, dang it. All right, there we go. Oh man, he's gonna do the purple farty gas, I can tell already. Alright, let's go back to the KVM. Oh, I don't have an extended magazine in this one. Dang it! I'm gonna have to get that. Oh, hey! That's self damage, though. back just a little bit here drop the shield my dear oh hey I should have reloaded all right it's kind of Work our way around him here. Use some of the tree cover to our advantage. Maybe sip our coffee for a second. Mm. There goes the shield. All right. Uh, dang it. Okay. We missed that opportunity, but that's okay. Use the bulk of this rock. It's a bit of a bit of a barrier here. He's using the trees against us. There we go. I think that that's three now. No. No, we've only taken down one. Dang. We still got to work on that knee a little bit more. All 
right, sick. One knee left. Let's go. He's gonna do the rockets now. Oh, here we go, thermobaric. Shield me, rock. Or not? Psych. Okay. Let's stay hidden for a second. Let him drop drop that shield. Good old crazy Reaper AI. One second he's gonna thermobaric and nuke the whole place, the other moment he's taking a stroll through the forest. Come on, dude. Drop that shield. What the Reaper doesn't know is that I have a hundred in my sneak skill. Let's go, dude. Drop the shield. So freaking sus. You're so sus, Reaper. Using this tree cover to our advantage. The moment that shield goes down, dude. The moment that shield freaking goes down. Come on, man. Guess take the opportunity to sip my coffee some more. Okay, come on, man. There we go. Oh, hey. Okay, so. We are going to stand sideways against this tree here. And completely safe. There we go. Thank you, Reaper friend. Freaking doggos. This is why we brought the cave. Yeah. There we go. KVM with the experimental shock rounds makes absolute light work of all the doggos in the vicinity. Right, let's be careful here. I think we're doing some pretty decent damage to him here. There's the purple farty gas. Dang it, man, when you need an experimental gas mask suit thingy. <laughs> I don't know, I actually, I went with like a scuba suit concept art, and it actually, it worked really good for the idea. If you dudes haven't seen it yet, I put out a video on a uh, wishlist DLC island. You should totally check it out. So again, let's use the strength of the Swedish tree 
This is why IKEA furniture is so great, dude. Oh, another, another one. Another one. All right. Reaper friend. Hello. Yeah, dude. Drop the shield. <laughs> Freaking cheater, man. All right, there we go. Thermobaric, stand sidewards against the tree. There we go. Something, something, something. Trees is sweet. You know, the Reaper is the one dude that does a really good job at getting around these trees, though. Thermobaric. I think we're gonna start hitting him with, him with the uh, PVG pretty soon here. Nice. Quickly here. All right, PVG time. The goal is to get the kill. The goal is to get the kill. All right. It's not quite red smoke yet, which is good. I believe if things are still functioning correctly, he'll put off red smoke uh, before he does his final thermo bear. Can't see past the smoke, man. All right, there goes that. Don't want to get too greedy here. Let's reload. Ooh, ooh, buddy. Almost caught me out there. Okay. Sure. Oh, 
Come on. He's so close, dude. Where's the tree? I couldn't even see it there. quick. I don't know what other components we can really hit. We've done, like, most of them. Okay, we got that one still. Alright, let's reload. Okay, he's got his shield up. Not much we could do. Bad kit. Reload. Oh, he's still got, uh, that's the, the friggin' actual face. There we go! Boom! Textbook Reaper. Took a minute. It's actually... It's been half a second since I've fought a Reaper, but... Hey. Nice. Alright. Take down the rest of these. Frickin' doggos. Hello, friend. Goodbye, friend. Now, the big question. Will we get a second Reaper here? Does not seem so. <laughs> Does not seem so. I might be a little bit off from the hour here. I might have gone for it a little bit early. But, either way, fat loot. Couple experimentals, a bunch of med kits, that's sick. Gonna take those. I kinda wish, oh dude, 1300 AP rounds, that's gonna be very nice. Um, yeah, I kinda wish that you could get uranium maybe from the Reaper, but all in all, his loot is always very nice. So, really quickly here, let's go over the steps of farming the Reaper, uh, just in a kind of six-step process here. So, first off, you want to farm the Harvester's Hunters to increase your region score. Then, you want to destroy the lowest level rival once you have hit above level 21. Three, you want to hope that Iron Jesus gives you the Reaper once you kill that lowest level rival. Uh, if you don't get the Reaper, then for step four, uh, you have to wait an hour. But if you do get the Reaper, then it's up to you. You can wait another hour like I do, or you can just go off and take down the Reaper. And then step six, profit. So, there you go, my dudes, how to farm the Reaper in 2022. Hopefully this can help you dudes out with uh, getting all of the FOA experimental suit, because it's one of the best outfits in the game, uh, as well as getting your entire collection of experimental weapons, and just keeping you stocked up and giving you a good, challenging fight every once in a while. So, my dudes, again, let me know if you want to know how to kill time here in Generation Zero so you can get around these really long wait times and cooldown periods. Uh, but, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay awesome, and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace out, my dudes.